Hello, and welcome back to the Cavalier's Tale. So, it's been a little while, um, but we're... I, I've uh, broken out all the recording equipment and my microphone, and I've got myself sat down and ready by the computer because we're ready for something very special again. It's the release of a new legendary army book, Saurian Ancients this time. So, um, you know, yesterday uh, will have been another release. I think um, a couple of channels did for yesterday. Someone else is doing something for today. There'll be more stuff throughout the rest of the week. Um, and then on release day, loads of full army book uh, reviews, you know, multiple hours, loads of stuff to look at, and you'll get the book on that day as well. I think that's going to be the 1st of September. Um, I'll double check that, and then if I'm wrong, I'll put it in the description below. Um, I guess I can check that now, actually. Yep, release day is September 1st. That's when all the full book reviews come out. That's when you'll be able to check it out. Um, but for now, uh, I'm doing one section uh, and I'm having a look at the magic items and the Haldar devices. Uh, so let's start with the weird one and take a look at the Haldar devices. Um, so nice and simple, uh, Haldar devices are upgrades that certain Saurian at what Saurian Ancients models can take. If one model in a unit is upgraded with a Haldar device, all other models in the unit must be upgraded with the same Haldar device as well. So that's a bit of a little bit of a spoiler within itself. You can have units of these things with devices. Obviously a Haldar is the, you know, cage construct thing that you put on the back of a big beast. Uh, I guess historically that's elephants. And thankfully in fantasy we can branch out a little bit more. And in this context that means really big dinosaurs units of really big dinosaurs that's very exciting uh, i'm i'm very hyped for this so um uh as you can see there in the bottom left thyroscutus can take um how to our devices uh, obviously taurosaurs will because of model continuation and spoilers a third one but i'm not going to tell you anything more than that there's just a third beastie that can take um how to our devices and that one's the brand new one so uh, wait until the end of the week, that'll be the Magnosauria section. Uh, keep an eye out for whoever's doing that one, and watch that. Lovely stuff. Big Dinosaurs is exactly what we want from a Saurian Ancients thing, and it's an exciting one. Um, so let's take a look at these properly. Uh, let's start with Carved Wisdom. Uh, 0 3 per army for 90 points. I suppose the points, doesn't really m points don't really matter particularly, because you know they're going to be fluctuating massively over the next couple of months anyway as things kind of shuffle and feel their way into a sensible spot. Um, so the model gains channel one. Uh, in addition, during spell selection, the model must choose one of the spells below. The model can cast the chosen spell as a bound spell with the power level four and eight. Uh, Fate's Judgment from Divination, Master of Earth from Druidism, Molten Copper from Alchemy, Swarm of Insects from Shamanism, and Touch of the Reaper from Evocation. Each spell can only be chosen by a single model with carved wisdom. So even if you've got a unit of, let's just say three, three Thyroscutus for the sake of argument, um, they'd all have to pick different spells by the looks of things, which means that you'd, you know, you can only, I, I mean, it's, it's not a three pair army anyway, but you, you know, you can basically build like a weird little bound spell wizard adept out of that. And also if you're taking it on three Thyroscutus, you've got, an extra power dice per magic phase just off the bat there so that's very good i mean it's very expensive for 90 points if you're going to put it on three guys but i mean you could do if you wanted um do you know i think um bound spells are a little bit meh but it means you can repeat spells with you know if your um and your arc archmage is taking divination or uh alchemy or evocation then you can double up on the, those spells there you can take an extra fate's judgment master of earth or touch the reaper which is pretty cool and just sneak it through or get a double one in you know when you're when you're lucky and stuff so you know that's pretty cool uh, i think well i don't know maybe 90 points is too many but as i say the points doesn't really matter at the moment um you can't spam the same spell which is good it's a cool one i like that one um Nothing much more to say about that. Uh, Monolith of Vitalism is very nice and simple, one of a kind. Uh, the model becomes the battle standard bearer. Full stop. That's all nice and easy. Um, as you may have noticed if you watched PTG's video from yesterday, uh, the army specific rule being no gods, no kings, 
You don't have to take any characters, and you cannot take a general. So, um, and then with, uh, oh, what's it called? Communal bond. So scoring units and compound units gain uh, inspiring presence, commanding presence of eight inches. That's where that comes from. Uh, and then you can't take a battle standard error besides this. Um, so, you know, if you want to take one, you know, because it might be worth it, especially on one of the bigger beasties that gives you towering presence with it. Uh, this is where you get it. Um, next one is specifically for the Tharascutus. It's 0 to 1 per army. Uh, changes the model's base to 60 by 100. Uh, you get six skink riders, and the model can join. Uh, the, the units that the model can join as per combined strength are replaced with skink warriors and skink hunters. So obviously, a Tharascutus sits on a 50 by 100 base which means that the units that it can join are going to be 25 millimeter squares. This just changes it to 20 mil squares, so you can put it in with your skinks. Um, skink hunters, I think, are light troops. So I wonder if putting this guy in there takes away their light troops, unless... Give me one second. Yep, so um, Thyroscutus don't have light troops. It's not a character, and it's not infantry, and it's not standard size, so it doesn't gain light troops from joining the unit. So joining Skink Hunters takes away the unit's light troops, but only so far as they can't move like light troops. I think they still have zero ranks, so that might be something that needs to be fixed, I guess. Um, particularly as all the shooting weapons have march and shoot, as you can see on the right there, so I guess that's something that you can just fix with a Thyroscutus. I don't know. No, that's probably unintended. Um, so we'll we'll flag that, I guess. I'll, I'll you know we'll prod someone and hope that gets fixed because otherwise it's a bit pants for them. Um, but also in addition to that, all of the model parts without harnessed in the various units. So that's all the skink riders gain poison attacks and hatred, which is that's pretty cool. Um, they're pants at hitting things and poison is really good and you get a reroll with it. So adds to the output of them, I guess, and makes up for all the spaces that you're taking up with your thyroscutus, which is nice. That's that's cool. Um, I think that's that's funky. Uh, the uh, I think the Thyroscutus was one of the ones spoiled in the spoilers. So uh, they ha they give the unit cannot be stomped, which is good for a Res two unit with no armor, and parry, which is also good for a unit a Res two unit with no armor. <laughs> so um, I think that's a pretty cool upgrade. Uh, as long as they fix the bit for skink hunters, maybe. Don't know. Depends on how much you like skinks. Um, the next three are shooting weapons. So uh, Suncatcher Crystal, first of all, is 0-3 power army. Um, the weapon can be used in two different ways. Choose which version to use the to use immediately before rolling to hit. All models in the same unit must choose the same version, either a dispersed beam or a focused beam. They both hit on 2+. plus. Um, dispersed beam is range 18 inches, shots D3 plus 1, strength 4, AP1. Accurate, march and shoot, reload, so you can't stand and shoot with it. Uh, and then focused beam 2 plus, range 12, one shot, strength 8, AP5, accurate, march, shoot, reload. So, no standing and shooting with it, but it's, you know, I mean, on three thyro scooters, if you're using that unit as like a blocker, then you can march up to sh something, shoot it with the dispersed beam, or the focused beam, I guess, if you want. I don't know, I, I think these are, these are pretty cool. Maybe a little. Maybe a little bit of expensive for such a short range, but on a unit of three thorough excuses, I think adding between the three of them, it'll find some worth. I think the dispersed beam particularly is pretty cool. Um, just adds to all the javelins and blowpipes that you're definitely going to be having in this this kind of list, especially if you're having more shooting from your monsters. So, um, magnetic great bow and engine of the ancients. So. Um, these are also shooting weapons, but the Suncatcher Crystal has a 0 to 3 per army. Uh, magnetic Great Bows and Engine of the Ancients don't have any 0 to 2 X per army at the moment. I imagine this will change. I don't think this will make it through to release, but currently, theoretically, you could have four Thyroscutus with a bow, three Taurosaurs with a bow, and redacted large big beastie with a bow as well, and just have eight bolt throwers. I imagine this will be changed, but you know, theoretically at the moment you can do that. Hello, so uh, it's this is uh, future Wes speaking to past Wes and current. Anyway, whatever. Um, so I've since spoken to uh, the Saurian Ancients lab team uh, with a couple of questions. This is one of the questions. 
Um, since then, it's been changed so that uh, the Suncatcher Crystal and Magnetic Great Bow are 0 to 3 models per army, uh, and then the Engine of the Ancients has been changed to 0 to 1 per army. So, no fear of 8 Great Bows per army. Um, so, you can disregard all of that. Okay, thank you very much. Back to the show. Um, so the magnetic great bow, first of all, uh, range 18, shots 2, strength 3, 5 for the big one, AP 1, 3 for the big one, uh, area attack of 1 bow 5, so that's a normal bolt thrower, um, multiple wounds, D3 for the big hit, it's load stone, march and shoot, reload, so you can't stand and shoot with it, you can march up with it, which is cool, and load stone is the magnetic special rule, if you're shooting at something with armor 3 or more, you get plus 1 to hit, which is cool, um, you know, with accurate and you know, basically means that you, you, for things that you want to be shooting at with them necessarily, you know, if you can get into the flank of some knights, that's pretty nice. Um, especially as at the moment, you can put this on a whole load of big beasties. <laughs> um, Engine of the Ancients is sort of similar, um, but not quite, I guess. Uh, range 12, shots 1, strength 6, AP 3, area attack 2 by 2, lodestone, so it's got the plus 1 to hit against units with armor 3 or more, march and shoot and reload. The attack never suffers negative to hit modifiers. Uh, for the purpose of shooting this weapon, the model can draw line of sight in any direction, even outside of its front arc. So the range 12 is poo, but you could put this on a unit of 3 virus cutises, not have to worry about looking at something and just shoot them with that and... You know, against a unit of knights, that's horrendously devastating. <laughs> um, again, I don't think we'll see quite as many as, you know, is technically allowed right here. I think that will change. But for now, you can do that. You, you could have like eight of these and just really mess up anything with armor, anything with resilience. And because you don't have to look at what you're shooting as well, it, it, you know, it's not really an issue for anything. <laughs> Um, and the final one, um, I think this one's pretty cool as well. I think this is good for a Thyrus Cutus in with uh, Tegu Guards, which are the, I don't remember the old name of them, the, the ones that look after the Coatl, the special unit with the Cobalt Clubs that don't have Cobalt Clubs anymore. Um, Lots one per army, friendly units within 8 inches of the model gain, Aegis 5 plus against shooting attacks. Or you could put it on like a really, really, really big beastie that maybe might exist somewhere in the book somewhere right at the end of the book and just have a massive bubble coming off of its very large base <laughs> um yeah i mean you know ages against stuff is always good um especially against shooting attacks it means more of your stuff makes it into combat which is good and it's uh that that's very good for your big scary beasties that you want to be hiding from cannons and uh bolt throwers catapults war machines all that so that's very very nice um, and there we go. So there's the um, there's the Haldar devices. Uh, my favourite one there, I guess, is Engine of the Ancients, or potentially yeah. Well, let's go Lodestone Shield because that plays into playing uh, Monster Mash potentially. You know, protect a couple of monsters with that. That's pretty cool. Um, Next up is the special items, so uh, let's go through these real quick. It's a little bit difficult to talk about these because I can't really talk about what they're good on because the characters aren't being done until tomorrow, so you'll have to make assumptions from the old book as to what characters are in the book and just, you know, uh, in infer some stuff that I can't tell you, basically. Uh, so Glory of the Dawn Age has made it through from the old book to the new one. Um, it's an enchantment for a halberd or spear. Uh, attacks with this weapon gain plus one strength, plus one armor penetration, become magical, magical attacks. In addition, attacks made with this weapon when for, a, for which a successful to wound roll of five plus was rolled gain lethal strike and multiple wounds too. So, I, I think rules is written, uh, lethal strike, you, you know, you just have lethal strike. If you're wounded on a better, if you've wounded on a six, you've got lethal strike. Um, I don't know whether it's trying to tell you that a 5 will cause a lethal strike as well. I don't think so, in which case it needs to be moved out of this clause and just into the previous one. But also, maybe you'll get lethal strike if you're all 5. So again, we'll find out about that, see what happens. 
Hello, it's me again. Um, I have seen, uh, this is another of the questions. Yes, it's rules as intended. Uh, a roll of a five, if it's a successful to wound roll, will also count as being a six for the purposes of lethal strike. Um, I don't know, maybe the rule wording will change, but rules as intended, a five or a six is lethal strike and multiple wounds too. Um, and multiple wounds too. Multiple wounds is always fantastic. I really love it for my KOE because it's just great for smashing through big units and causing lots of combat res. And for something on a halberd, so a halberd is what, plus one strength and AP anyway, then you get plus one strength and AP from this. Um, you'll remember from the old book that uh, the Tegu character is most likely going to be strength five. Um, so your strength five, strength six, strength seven, AP four, multiple wounds too. That's all good stuff. Uh, you're not likely to be rolling many five pluses, so whether or not it's worth it is up to you, but you know. I think it's cool. I think that, that's good. Multiple wounds is always a favourite of mine. Um, next up, alchem alchemical arrows, so magnetic shortbow. Just like the it's it's a shortbow with AP1 and lodestone, so against armor three units or above, plus one to hit. Um, shots four, strength five, AP1. Attacks made with this weapon become magical attacks if the weapon inflicts one or more hits. All other simultaneously sh made shooting attacks with lodestone from the wielder's unit gain plus one strength and magical attacks for duration of phase. So that's pretty cool because, you know, as I've just said, the uh, magnetic short bows are strength three AP1. If you hit with this one, it becomes strength four. It's all good. Uh, there's a restriction as well if you'll have watched PTG's video from uh, yesterday. You can only take 25 of these, so they're pretty good anyway. This just boosts them up. So if you're going to push that limit all the way to 25, maybe take some shooting weapons from your Haldar devices. This is one you're going to want if you're playing like a uh, a skin cloud type list. Uh, next, Serpent's Nest Swarm. So this is kind of similar to, um, oh, what's it called? It's like Swarm Master for VS. Um, can't be taken by wizards. It's an enchantment for hand weapon or paired weapons while using this weapon. The wields attack value is set to six, and attacks made with this weapon become poison attacks and magical attacks. So, um, I guess put it on paired weapons if you want to ignore parry, otherwise you're not going to get the extra attack. Um, because this is set, which is step four of your modifiers. Uh, so it's after additions. So you you know you have your characters attacks, then your paired weapons plus one, and then it's set to six anyway. So, uh, but poison is good. Um, this is most likely going to be useful on... Ooh, I suppose you could put it on one of your big monsters and have him with six attacks and strength six. That's pretty cool. Um, but, you know, most likely this is going to be something that you see on Skinks. Um, and it's a very good weapon for that, I'd say. Um, armor enchantments. So we've lost serrated scales. Um, Starfall... I think it was Starfall Shard previously, wasn't it? That's been moved into armor enchantments and... Taurosaur's figure is now Vital Essence. So Vital Essence is bearer's health points are set to four. Uh, in addition, uh, the bearer gains fortitude and fortitude plus one to a maximum of six, uh, to a maximum of four plus, sorry. So again, if you've watched your spoilers, um, Skinks have a fortitude of six plus. So this is a good one for a character for that because it boosts it to five plus. Um, or you could put it on a big beastie for a cheap little uh, special save and an extra hit point. It's up to you. Um, maybe that's a bit expensive for that. Don't know. Um, but I mean, you know, extra health points are always good, especially if you're playing with some druidism. So, and you have to put it on a shield. So you can combine that with, yeah. I mean, I would say death cheater, but it's, it's capped at four plus, isn't it? So, nah. Uh, Starfall scales is pretty cool. Um, whereas model gains hard target. So I think that's the right specification to ignore massive bulk. So I think this is something that you can still put on an Alpha Carnosaur or a Taurosaur. Because um, otherwise it would be the bearer, wouldn't it? So yes, I think, yeah, bearer's model and wearer's model, that sidesteps massive bulk. So I think these still apply to a gigantic mount. Uh, so you get hard target and attacks that were flaming attacks are no longer flaming attacks. So you can give the model oh well it's a suit of armor enchantment so i guess it's good for uh healing waters but you can't give yourself death cheater and this because they're both in the same slot so i guess that's why 
that's that interaction. Um, but a hard target on a gigantic mount is really good, especially if you're going to combine it with um, the lodestone shield. So you could have a character with uh, a Taurosaur with that for 5 plus Aegis against range attacks, and also hard target if you really want to keep your guy alive, I guess. Whether or not that's any good, I don't know, but uh, <laughs> you can do that. Uh, banner enchantments. So the first one is the Koru Stone uh, for 75 points. Can't be taken by units in core. The bearer's unit gains rally around the flag whose range is set to 8 inches. So most likely you're going to put this on a scoring unit or one of your compound units so they can benefit from communal bond with uh, um, uh, minimized discipline checks. Um, and then in addition to the commanding presence that that unit is providing, it now gives rally around the flag as well. So. Uh, that's good for a really big combined unit if you're going to go for like you know a big central block um, or you could put it on something that's not going to benefit from that and just use it as a rally around the flag and ignore communal bond if you wanted though it's probably a bit expensive for doing that so and there are limited choices outside of core that can take banner enchantments I think so fairly sensible uh, next one so I don't know how long this one will last. <laughs> I think this is a bit like Divine Judgment from when the KOE book came out. Um, and you'll see what I mean when we go through it. So for only 50 points, so the same price as a bet rending banner, the bearer gains magic resistance one. And then in addition, one use only, the bearer's unit and all units in base contact with the bearer's unit automatically fail all Aegis saves. The effect lasts until the bearer's unit is no longer engaged in combat. My goodness, what on earth is this? <laughs> so, against demons, that's horrendous. Against uh, KOE, that's 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 bad. Like if you've got armor on top, or if you've got AP on top of that for this unit, that's bad for them as well. It's it's not even divine attacks. If it was divine attacks and a bit more expensive, fine. That 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 wouldn't be ridiculous but uh, automatically fail all Aegis saves is mad like even if you're just worried about like the one character in there with a 4 plus Aegis and like the rest of his guys within his unit don't have anything you know smash you know you, you just and like if you're putting it on like you know you've seen what we've got so far and you can probably like there's not an awful lot of Aegis in this book uh, because, you know, the skinks get fortitude and everything else is, is big, tough dinosaurs, right? So not an awful lot of Aegis saves. So it's it's not a drawback for the, this unit the, with, with the banner. It's only horrendous for the things that you're playing against. So I think maybe divine attacks here would have been uh, nicer. <laughs> uh, so we'll see, and especially for only 50 points. And also you can take it on a core unit. So you can take it on like a massive unit of um, Tegu warriors, add some, you know, add a combined unit in there, uh, add a big scary character in there, and then, you know, just sit and eat whatever you like, basically. If it's got an Aegis save, then it, it, it can't, it can't go against you. And this is like, poor demons, poor demons, poor, poor demons. Um, okay, next up, uh, Obelisk of Collaboration. This is nice and simple. Uh, your bearer's unit gains pack hunter. I think this is really good. Um, it's for the same price as the Castellan's Crest, which is a one-use thing, and this is just re-roll charges if you're part of a combined charge. So, hmm. But uh, so I think this this will be very very popular if you can find a second unit to just charge in with your big scary unit that you've put this on. They'll get re-rolls to charge, and then hopefully the extra unit will fail. Or you can set it up in the fact that that it's a really long charge or. You know, whatever. This is really good. Uh, I I think cheap uh, for what it does. Um, yeah, nice and simple. Cheap, very good. Um, on to the artifacts. So Ancient Black has made it through to the new book. Uh, it's dominant, so you can't combine it with uh, Magical Heirloom, Essence of a Free Mind, I think, and maybe something else. I uh, can't combine it with Fail Catcher Astrolab. Astrolabe? Astrolabe. 
Um, yeah, so what does it do? Uh, once per magic phase, a single magic dice may be re-rolled when the bearer performs casting attempt with two or more magic dice that is not miscast, or uh, when the owner performs a dispelling attempt with two or more dice. So that's fantastic. It's a bit like a Sacred Hourglass, I guess, but it's a one-use thing per magic phase. But, I mean, this is great. Like, you know, and your arcs are great at casting things, so... This is fantastic, and if you've got the points, it'll go in if you're taking if you're going that route with your magic. Um, next thing is Veil Catcher Astrolabe. Um, so this is dominant as well. Uh, the bearer gains a Veil token every time the model successfully casts a non-bound, non-attribute spell after resolving the spell's effects and any attribute spells. So uh, you could go Veil Catcher and then just spam yourself with Veil tokens, I guess. Um, I think between phases it's capped at six, isn't it? So once you get up to that mount. Uh, you're capped out. Um, this army is insane for the amount of channel that you can fit into this. So, you know, you, you're going to be at that, like, magic phases won't be difficult for this army at all. Um, especially if you're putting this in as well. Um, and also, you know, this is the um, uh, evocation attribute, but just for any other path that you want to take, basically, which is really very good. Uh, next one, Stampede Resonator Crystal. So this is 50 points, one use only. Uh, may be activated at the start of any melee phase. Choose one friendly large cavalry unit or gigantic model within 12 inches of the bearer's model and apply the following effects, all of them or none. Until the end of the magic, uh, until the end of the melee phase, uh, each model in the uh, gains, gains impact hits X, where X is equal to the number of, uh, equal to its amount of stomp attacks. If a model already has impact hits, increase its number of impact hits by its amount of stomp attacks instead and then the model cannot perform any stomp attacks so essentially its stomp attacks happen at agility 10 instead of agility 0 um that's really cool for a one use thing um i think maybe it could be cheaper possibly but also i don't know how awesome it could be for like some units so you know for the, for um do they do impact hits they might do yeah, I, I I think this is really cool. I think it could do with being cheaper, possibly. But again, don't know how good this could be. I mean, I suppose you could take it on um, on a Taurusaur itself and then just use it on, you know, your own Taurusaur when it charges into combat to just give it that boost when it first charges in. But um, I don't know. At that point, maybe it could do with not being one use. Don't know. It's really good. I think maybe there are limitations with the price or the one use only. And so say I. <laughs> uh, so next is... Teopori. Smokestone. So that wasn't as complicated as it looked. Um, one use only may be activated when a friendly unit failed to break test after any rerolls until the start of the next friendly movement phase. Charge and pursuit rolls made by enemy units within 18 inches of the bearer's model are subject to minimized rolls. So, a little bit of a double edged sword because you've got to use a friendly unit and then fail its break test. So, I suppose you could put a unit of chaff into something, hope that it doesn't die and it's going to break instead, and then once it does, charge and pursuit are minimized for your opponent. So I think it's interesting. I'm not sure how much use it'll get because it might be difficult to use properly, or maybe it's just really, really good if you're putting it in and then it'll happen at some point in the game. Um, I suppose it affects pursuits immediately after like the second it is activated, right? So if you've got your big scary unit in with combat and that happens to break from combat, you can then use your Teopori Smokestone to minimize the pursuit after you, which might be good, especially on something that's a bit quicker. Um, so that might be worth it that way. Depends on how lucky you're feeling, I suppose. And also it's only 25 points, so try it out, see what you think, and then move on if it's not good. Uh, Heart of Atua. For 25 points, if the mod if the bearer is part of a compound unit, the range of the unit's commanding presence is always set to 12 inches. So this just boosts the communal bond's commanding presence from 8 to 12. On a big enough unit, that's a pretty large bubble because of how much bigger the bubble's going to be because of the unit boundary rather than from a single model. So that's pretty cool. 
I suppose, again, if we're talking a big unit with uh, either Corrid Stone, or if you're going to go for a big unit with Skeptic Scale, you could give this to your Tegu character that's going to go in with your big block of Tegu guards and a Thyrus Cutus, uh, and then just make your commanding presence a little bit bigger so you can play a little bit wider with everything else. Yeah, that's what you'd do for that if you want to spend the 25 points on that, I guess. Uh, and then finally, for a mere 10 points for Skink Veterans only, uh, is the Infiltrator's Dart. So right before the battle, during Step 7, the deployments phase sequence, you must mark a single enemy unit from your opponent's army list with Prey Scent. So um, to save you going back to yesterday's videos to have a look at that, if you don't remember that, because of course you've watched PTG's video. Um, Prey Scent is markers and then uh yeah it, it's marking lure and prey scent um something with predator senses um so it, it's a very simple system it's just very complicated in the rules because we've got three sets of rules here to have it activate marking lures predator senses and prey sense if something has a prey scent marker that can be given to something by a marking lure or a magic item uh, or the unit, then something with predator senses rerolls to hit against it. That's very cool. I think that's very good for like you know representing uh, taking the uh, Ramphodon Riders ability from the Ramphodon and expanding it to be the, the army because you know if you're going to look at Ramphodons and why are they better hunters than like Alpha Carnosaurs or Stygiosaurs or Raptors? You know, whatever else it has it in the army. I don't think raptors do, but something else does. Um, that's very cool. I'm not sure about how much work has gone into making it do that, especially rerolls hit against all the time is really good. Potentially you could just replace it with hatred beasts, but it's very cool. For 10 points, that's very cheap. Um, if you're looking at it there, I think you only get the one marker and then you have to place them all on with marking lures. Uh, so you, you can pivot your army, build, army list building to go for a load of skinks that will set up marking lures to give prey scent markers so that your units with predator senses get rerolls to hit. Which is cool. Uh, oop, gone too far. Uh, and that's the final one for today. So um, that's all of the magic items, all the Haldar devices. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed the video. Um, stick around check out the news tomorrow see who else is uploading for tomorrow uh tomorrow should be the character section um thank you very much for watching i will catch you next time